Hello everyone, I'm Bridget Ingle. And I'm Sheree Wheaton. And together we are COMPT, the Centre for Orofacial Myofunctional Therapy. And we want to tell you about the upcoming workshop that we are running. It's on the 9th and 10th of October. Two day workshops and our workshops are aimed at a very multidisciplinary approach. The workshops are very interactive and we love the way that we present the theory and the information and each of the different professions brings together their clinical experience to share. Mm -hmm. And this is a wonderful way of learning over the two days of the workshop. The first day of the workshop is mostly run by Cherie. So I thought I would let Cherie tell you a little bit about what most of her lectures are worked on and it's uh, based on it's the daisy wheel or whatever we call it Cherie isn't it? We call it, the D, we call it the D cork. Which what is does that dynamic, stand for? A dynamic cranio orofacial respiratory complex so this is actually found on our website you can download it uh, but we actually go through all the different little layers to this actual to this wheel. So the day sort of starts out and we talk about well, what is actual optimal orofacial function what actually happens here what is ideal function how should we be moving how should this um, part of our body work properly so we talk about that we talk a little bit about anatomy as well which is to go over the the basic anatomy a bit of a refresher for us all so we talk about what's uh, optimal orofacial function and then we go through the steps of the wheel so then we talk about the influences on this you know, optimal orofacial function, what can kind of influence this part of the body to stop it from working optimally? And then from that, we go, all right, well, what happens when you get this um, interference in this proper function? What, what happens from there? What do we see? What do we see happening? What, what does that sort of look like? And so for a lot of people they're seeing in their everyday clinic, they're seeing these things in their patients go, oh, they're mouth breathing. Why are they mouth breathing and what does what are the consequences of that as an example? So we go through that and then we go, well, okay, well, from looking at the dysfunction and the disorders we see, what are the consequences from that? So we not only look at it with our particular eyes um, within our scope of practice, but we also use the delegates that we have uh, in our courses and they're within their scope of practice, what they see and their experiences. So we have patient uh, delegates who may be chiropractors, osteopaths. We have some medical mm. doctors. We have lactation consultants, midwives, um, dental practitioners. We speech have pathologists. Speech pathologists. Yes. We have... Um, Nutritionists, yeah, and integrative health practitioners. Mm. So lots of different types of health professionals. So this course is for all different health professionals, you know, mm. allied health and medical uh, and dental. So we go through this. We actually have, uh, with those discussions, uh, we we learn a lot from, from our delegates just as mm. much as they learn from us. So we're working, we also discuss particular cases and we look at with our particular set of eyes, what do we see? what do we see what do we notice what how do we we even sort of end up discussing how we refer to each other so it's a great networking opportunity as well mm. so that and everything relates back to the main umbrella that we call it which is breathe feed eat, eat and sleep. sleep and how all these come together so I just wanted to read out to you just a, some feedback that we've got from previous delegates about, you know, our course. So someone said that this course was very interesting and informative and they left the course with, um, and went home to research more information right away on the topics that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody else said that they love the multi multidisciplinary approach yeah. on the particular topic. So looking at all the things on our wheel and then looking at it from, again, different aspects. I love that too. I, I always learn yeah. during those discussions. So I, absolutely. Mm -hmm. They also said that it was a great course, a very eye-opening to all the connections and the holistic thinking and it answered a lot of long-term uh, questions and suspicions that they had and ideas and they couldn't wait to find out more. Mm -hmm. So sometimes some people want to do our workshops because they have an interest in this area and they may be thinking about going on to to do some further courses in say my functional therapy and they sort of want to dip their toes in and get a bit of an understanding um, 
a bit of a snippet, a bit of an insight. And so they might do our two-day course and they go, okay, yeah, I really want to get into this area, learn more about, you know, the area of my functional therapy. And then they go on from, from there to do further courses. Mm. So that's the Saturday. And yes. uh, that's a pretty full-on day, but it's great, really good. And Sunday, Bridget, with your mm. lactation and early feeding um, yeah. course. So what's that? Yes. Well, it's not just about lactation and breastfeeding because they're not the same thing, are they, Sheree? Yeah, they are. I used to think it was many years ago. <laughs> yes. But it's, it is uh, lactation, young, uh, you know, baby feeding and young child feeding, but also under the umbrella of breathe, feed, feed, eat, sleep, covering the baby through to little early years stages. So we do also go over an anatomy and physiology, but in a very practical way. How do we apply that to all of our principles of how a baby is supposed to be able to breathe and feed and how is a child supposed to be able to eat and feed and and sleep and we're bringing in that anatomy and physiology plus clinical experience together because we often find that babies who have difficulty feeding and breathing are often the ones who go on to have difficulties later on as little people Mm -hmm. Definitely. And that's why it's really important that we do our very, very best to help the babies with the best outcome for their feeding experiences so that we can set in place some very good functional behaviours for their ongoing life. But of course, sometimes we're not in that situation to always meet a baby first. We might only meet a two-year-old first or a three-year-old or a four-year-old, and they are presenting with circumstances reported by the parents or that we can visually see and we're able to put those pieces together and go right back to find out what happened as a baby and build a bit of a story so that a diagnosis can be made a management plan can be set up so that we can help them get on their way so that they don't continue to struggle and end up as a teenager with a a breathing breathing a feeding or sleeping Yes. Issue. Yes, like in your in your clinic. That's exactly exactly right. So I love it too because we have clinicians coming along who aren't necessarily in the field of infants and babies, and you certainly don't have to be, because they come along and they tell us that they like to learn about how it, it should be or what kinds of things can go amiss as a little person as a baby or a little person because it helps them have an understanding of what they are seeing in their practice when they're seeing a six-year-old or a 16-year-old or a 60-year-old because it really helps to build a good history. Yeah. So we have, once again, all different professions coming and we don't necessarily have people coming on the Sunday who are involved only in working with babies and small children. We find it very interactive yeah. I love that part of it yeah, as well. Mm. Yes, and we also do case studies as well, break down case studies, and we have um, yes done videos of those. Sometimes we have them come in to the lectures, depending on where we're doing it and how we're doing it. We've done that as, as well. Oh, or we even end up using the children of the delegates coming along or in your course, sometimes the delegates, the delegates. themselves have volunteered themselves to go, oh, can you yeah. do an assessment yeah. on me? How look at me. Because yes. you can see them all sitting there all day going, uh-huh, yeah, I think I've got that problem. Yeah, the penny drops. My two-year-old's got that problem, the penny yeah. drops. <laughs> That's yeah. right. It's exactly right. Yes. So right. we've still got... A few spaces left for the 9th and the 10th, mm-hmm. haven't we, Cherie? How can everyone book? Well, if you click on the link that's in this uh, post or if you get uh, can't find the link, then just go to our website at www.comt.com.au and just click on the workshop tab at the top of the website. Um, this is a different kind of event because normally we just have it in person, but because border restrictions um, in Australia and the difficulties at the moment we've decided to have this in Brisbane and then also we've made it available on live uh, online live it won't be recorded because we do like to encourage a good healthy discussion 
And um, we find sometimes when we record these things, I find it sort of inhibits people from from uh, from joining in, I suppose. So it's live. So if you're not in Brisbane, you can join us yes. online, but you need but to come, be present at, at the time because yeah. there's no And if you've got records, a choice, if you're in Brisbane, ex- you know, I'll yeah. stay at home and I want, it's, you'll get more out of it if you can to come, to come in. And we get to network and use it as a networking opportunity. So during meal breaks and things like that, we can, we can have a chit chat and, and discuss it. So if anybody has any questions about the course, feel free to email us at uh, compt contact, that's C-O-M-T, C-O-N-T-A-C-T at gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting late in the day. And or, um, or compt info yes. at gmail.com. So uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Happy to mm-hmm. happy to answer them. And we hope to see you in a few weeks' time. Seats are limited. This uh, we don't allow large numbers. Yes. Because we want the best possible interactions. Yes, we have so too many people. Out. Yeah, it's too many people. It's we find it hard to sort of uh, sit down and have really good, healthy discussions. So we do like the, the smaller groups. But um, yes, all right. Let us know if you have any questions. Yes. Hope uh, to see you there, everyone. And hopefully, we'll see you in a few weeks. Bye. Bye.